Black Lives Matter, like I said before, I said this on the show last week, I'll say it again. It's not just about the killing of one African American on our man or another African American on our man. Black Lives Matter is a thing. It's a movement, right? It's a political force. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's really influenced this entire 2016 election. Now, at the debate this week, let's be real and honest, not one candidate brought up Black Lives Matter. It was not a question, nor was it an answer. But, caveat, Rand Paul, I, you know me, you know how I do here at The Fowler Show. I give credit where credit is deserved. And I thought Rand Paul's, when they started talking about legalization of marijuana, Rand Paul began to have this conversation about mass incarceration, the impact that mass incarceration has on poor people. And how when you choose not to legalize marijuana, what you create is a situation where in communities that are poor, disproportionately those are communities of color, you're basically breaking up the family, you're splitting up the family, and you're making it impossible for these people to, you know, for, for families to, to, to thrive. And so we've got to, one, end the war on drugs, and two, we've got to have criminal justice reform. Now, I'm not saying that's you know, Black Lives Matter in its entirety, but that is part of the Black Lives Matter plank. And I think, you know, you've got to give credit where credit is due. Is he on the forefront of black liberation? No. Right? Does he understand black pain? Negative. But is he trying to move forward a policy plank that will impact, that will impact the betterment of black families? Of course he is. Right? In Iowa, um, activists basically took over the stage of a Scott Walker performance. Um, in Nevada, multiple groups of, you know, uh, of Black Lives Matter protesters and Black Lives Matter activists, they, they basically, you know, had a, they, they disrupted a Jeb Bush press conference, a uh, Jeb Bush event. And Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton has faced multiples of these groups of activists during, you know, some tense meeting in New Hampshire, where she talked about the idea that you don't change hearts and minds, you change policies and advocate, you change policy, policy and advocacy, and allocation of resources. But all the candidates are going to be forced to deal with this. A recent, at, during the Fox News debate, um, before that, Facebook released some information of what's the number one search topic, what's the number one trending topic on Facebook. And issues of race is topping the charts. And the reason being is because we as a nation are, forced, are now being forced to deal with this Black Lives Matter movement. And this is not your parents' civil, this is not the MLK civil rights movement. This is a civil rights movement that has, adap has adapted new tactics to get their message across and their message heard. Whether that be through interrupting events or it be through a very, very, very strong digital media presence. And every candidate, I feel, as well has to answer this question. Do black lives matter? And if they do matter, what, do you, what are you going to do to make sure that they matter? Now, a lot of people say all lives matter. And yes, indeed, it is true in theory that all lives matter. But... Did all lives matter when the United States had Jim Crow laws? Or did all lives matter when they put Japanese individuals in internment camps in, the war, in World War II? Did all lives matter when we had the slave trade? Did all lives matter in the Dred Scott decision? I can go on and on and on and talk about situations where all lives didn't matter, but conveniently, when there's a movement of African Americans saying black lives matter, you hear this all lives matter rhetoric. Because like I said, in theory, all lives do matter. But when you go into the subgroups, Black lives don't matter, and black trans lives don't matter, and black gay lives don't matter, and I would say Hispanic lives don't matter. Because if they did, America, then you wouldn't see an instance like we saw in New York where an African-American man was choked death by police officers who didn't give two craps, or better yet, what happened a couple weeks ago when the police officer mistook a tennis star, big tennis star, U.S. Open star, for a downright criminal and tackled him in a hotel. You understand what I'm saying here, folks? What we're dealing with is a, a national crisis of epic proportion. And in order for us to deal with it, we've got to have a real conversation about it. Not a, we're not going to talk about Black Lives Matter because all lives matter. We're going to talk about Black Lives Matter because we truly believe all lives matter. You get what I'm saying? You understand the like, and, and that's I think the misnomer here. People have called the Black Lives Matter group terrorist. They've called the Black Lives Matter group militants, and that's not true at all. Would you call the Tea Party group terrorist? Would you call the Tea Party group militants when they were out front of Capitol Hill spitting on Black members of Congress? I don't think so. 
They were advocating their position. So what makes them a terrorist because they're advocating their position? And don't get me wrong, I've, there are folks out there who have said awful, d Democrats and progressives have said awful things about the Tea Party. Tea Party, I don't agree with, any, I don't espouse any of their beliefs, but I do uh, uh, respect their rights to protest and assemble and, you know, wave, don't tread on me flags. It's cute. And I think the Black Lives Matter has the right to do the same thing. 